Hello, we are Frank and Joan Testa, former Catholic priest and nun. We left the Catholic Church separately more than 33 years ago after 43 years of combined service in that religion. There have been attempts at reformation of the Catholic Church in the past centuries. We believe the Lord is repeating the call in Revelation 18 for an exodus in this 11th hour of history. In our recently published book, From Darkness to Light, we echo that plea. Come out from among them, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. After 39 years as a Catholic priest, eight years in the seminary and more than 13 years as a priest, I left the Catholic Church October 1st, 1977. As a priest, I was involved intensely in urban ministry, organizing neighborhoods, building homes for the poor, reaching out to drug addicts and the rejected, in addition to traditional priest functions in parishes. As a teenager, I had a real touch from the Lord while reading a book about a man going to the electric chair. The Holy Spirit convicted me. I repented and committed my life to serve the Lord 100%. The only way I knew was to become a Catholic priest. After confronting the Catholic Church that was so turned in on itself and seeing moral corruption and cover-ups, not of pedophiles, I knew there was something terribly wrong within the Catholic Church, the Church of my youth. After 12 years as a priest, I was powerfully challenged by an experience with a black Pentecostal church to seek the Lord and his word for his answers for my life. After a long period of prayer and fasting, the Lord showed me the contradictions in Catholic doctrines to the word of God, and he gave me my marching orders in the second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 6, and I'll quote that a text. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty." My wife Joan and I didn't leave the Catholic Church to get married, but we're so glad that that was God's plan for us. It is ironic that we have recently published our life testimonies and teaching book, From Darkness to Light, at a time when there is rallying of support for the Catholic Church as the Obama administration is attempting to run roughshod over religious freedom. But the issue of religious freedom is clearly separate from the issue of serious doctrinal error and contradictions to the Word of God. The Apostle Paul, in that same epistle to the Corinthians, feared that Satan would deceive believers whose minds could be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ, even preaching another gospel. It was because we were in the Word, the Bible, earnestly seeking the Lord, that He was able to show us the doctrinal contradictions to the Bible. God doesn't consider it a small thing to contradict or add to and take away from His Word. We have no choice but to come out from the Catholic Church, and we have never regretted that decision for one minute. There's more, but first, Hear from my wife, Joan. As an Irish Catholic teenage girl growing up in New York State, I knew no other way to serve the Lord but wholeheartedly, but to give my life to the Lord and enter the convent and become a nun. 
I entered the Dominican convent in Newburgh, New York after high school and stayed there for 22 years. I taught school in New Jersey and New York, but it was in Puerto Rico that the climax of my life came. Desiring to pray healing prayer for my little nephew back home who was sick led me to a prayer meeting in Old San Juan. This meeting turned out to be a divine appointment because when they prayed over me, I felt the love of God like never before. My eyes became open to the scriptures and I couldn't get enough of the word of God. And I desired to study the Bible so that I could teach it to others. My dream came true when I was assigned to an inner city parish in Newark, New Jersey. There I was free from teaching obligations to share the Bible with the lonely elderly and welfare mothers who welcomed me warmly. It was in this parish that I met Frank, a street priest and an advocate for the poor. However, a serious situation arose in that church that God used to lead Frank out of the Catholic Church and priesthood altogether. Frank strongly challenged me and another nun, Teresa, to flee the scandalous situation, no matter how content we were in our ministry with the people. In our book, From Darkness to Light, you see how the Lord brought us both out and together in a way we never imagined. And you might ask, how can we write such an indicting book on the Catholic Church after serving there so many years? The Lord showed us his truth in the word, the simple truth of the gospel, and we had to choose between life and death. We chose life and have never regretted it. Our eyes were opened to the heresy of the Mass as the Catholics celebrated daily, offering up Jesus in sacrifice again, contrary to Hebrews 10:12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. The early church had celebrated the Lord's Supper as he directed in the Gospels. The idea of the doctrine called transubstantiation, where the bread and the wine are transformed into the body and blood of Jesus, was unheard of until the 12th century. It was man's invention to keep the Mass mystical and the priest superior. Praying to Mary and the saints, praying for the dead in purgatory, and buying indulgences, special dispensations for sin, were all introduced after the Emperor Constantine in the 4th century stopped persecution, became a Christian, and gave Rome over to the bishops. But there have always been watchmen appointed by God himself. Israel had them, and so did the New Testament church. However, in the Middle Ages, in the height of immorality and heresy in the Catholic Church, courageous priests and people arose to expose the lies and point the masses of people back to the true gospel. Some of these were John Wycliffe, John Huss, Martin Luther, all priests of the Catholic Church. Wycliffe saw that the Catholic Church was in opposition to the Bible. He was persecuted because he translated it into the language of the people so that they could read it for themselves. He died in 1384. John Huss was a devout priest also who understood the scriptures and questioned the hierarchy on their false doctrines and deception of the people. This caused him to be burned at the stake in 1415. Martin Luther, an Augustinian monk in the 16th century, saw that the practice of indulgences and masses for the dead were unscriptural. And somewhere between 1518 and 1521, he boldly nailed his 95 Theses on the church door in Wittenberg, Germany. However, Luther didn't go far enough in his reform because he held to some Roman Catholic practices, and especially the doctrine of the Mass, as he formed his own doctrine of the Lutherism. We, too, challenge all truth-seeking Catholics, clergy and nuns, to go back to the simple doctrines of the Apostles, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. That's from 1 John 1, 3. And in the second chapter of Acts of the Apostles, verse 42, we read, And they continued steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in the breaking of bread and prayer. 
We lift up our voices in love for the Catholic people today who have been deceived as the multitudes throughout the centuries because the same lies and false doctrines that were challenged by their own scholarly priests in the Middle Ages are being perpetuated today. In the past, numerous innocent Catholic clergy were burned at the stake for proclaiming the simple truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In these last days, someone needs to be a voice of truth to Catholics. Joan and I have a real burden for the 68 million Catholics in America who believe they are part of the church Jesus founded, though most Catholics do not know what is in the Bible or the Catholic doctrinal contradictions to the Word of God. Most Catholics just get a 20-minute Sunday sermon that depends on what kind of theology the priest-preacher got in the seminary. They believe and trust that the biggest religious organization with hierarchy, liturgy, and impressive history is the true Church of Jesus Christ. What is known as the Catholic Church only had its origin in the 4th century as Emperor Constantine declared himself a Christian and sought to consolidate his empire, he offered to church leaders in Rome a share in his political power. Corrupted by the lust for worldly political power, these bishops launched a colossal aberration from the Christian church that existed until that time and became known as the Roman Catholic Church. From thence followed centuries of moral and doctrinal contradictions to the church Jesus founded and the truth of God's word. From the birth of the New Testament church Jesus founded and the Holy Spirit filled and set out on the stormy sea of history, there has always been a faithful remnant of true believers. After the deceptive origin of what came to be called the Roman Catholic Church, in the fourth century. There were waves of reform efforts, but from the 16th century those efforts left the Catholic Church even more fixed in its doctrines and doctrinal deceptions that persist to this day. The reform efforts became an exodus of those who were willing to risk their lives for the truth of the gospel. Over the centuries thousands, such as the Anabaptists, have even faced martyrdom under the oppressive hand of Rome. We believe God is indeed calling for a new exodus for Catholics in these last days. And we believe the Lord has called us to serve in this purpose by urging Catholics and others in unrighteous churches to come out from among them. We pray our book, From Darkness to Light, will encourage those who love truth to come out. It is available online through Zulon Press Bookstore, Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. You may also contact us by email, harusa at comcast.net and our website, alpha and omega ministries.info. Thank you. The Lord bless you.